All right, we have to get underway with this amazing holiday sausage onion lasagna with the roasted eggplant and portobello mushrooms. This one's gonna be a real crowd pleaser. I have got six links of hot Italian pork sausage just browning away in my pot here. I put these in with a little olive oil about 10 minutes ago, but now I'm gonna go ahead and get them out of the heat. And I'm gonna turn this down to low, but keep it going. What I've done is set us up for what is going to be the defining feature of this amazing sausage and onion lasagna. Because if you're gonna have a, if you want onion to deserve its place in the title of this lasagna, it can't just be some raw onion sauteed up. It's got a leg work for it. And so come on. over here with me. What you're gonna find is that where that sausage was, it has left behind all of its delicious oils and fats and even a little bit of water that's come out of the sausage. And this has created the perfect wintertime hot bath for these wonderful uh, thinly sliced onions. We're going to give an onion the Christmas gift that it deserves, which is the time it needs and the low heat that it needs to really caramelize its sugars, exude out its liquids, and become the perfect essence of onion flavor. And then we're going to get it into the pan without further ado as such. Okay. Going to give a quick stir to get everything working together. Going to give a little sprinkle of salt. Remember we want to add salt at every addition, making sure we're layering flavor from the bottom up. And the salt has dual purpose here. It isn't just about the, the flavor that salt gives, but it's also about the fact that it's going to actually break down the cell wall of that onion, allowing it to release all of its liquids. And I'm gonna cover this, turn it down to medium low, and we'll take a peek every once in a while to make sure that we're that we're on track. I am now doing kind of the grunt work of a recipe like this. If you have someone in your home good with a knife, you can easily delicate these services. And what I'm going for here is just about a quarter of an inch. We want this to mimic a noodle. We talk about this in Daddy Guy's Kitchen all the time. It's about the repetition of texture and creating texture out of things that shouldn't be what they are. And in lasagna, things shaped like this are supposed to be a noodle, but we're gonna toss it up, we're gonna trick it out, and we're gonna use this eggplant so that no one ever really quite knows what they're biting into, but they know that it is delicious. I'm gonna dive into my portobello mushrooms, and I think that for these, I'm gonna continue with this trend and cut them in a very similar fashion. And I'm just gonna give them a quick shower with a little extra virgin olive oil sprinkle with some salt and hit them with pepper. Big pepper mills out of pepper. Gonna go with the tiny guy right now. Just gonna give these mushrooms a quick toss in the bowl. And then I will turn them out onto my first of two lined baking sheets. I've got a nice silicone liner here, which make life so easy. I'm gonna go right on into our oven, which I have set at 350 right now, but I'm gonna reassess that in a minute. So don't get too, com don't get too comfortable with the 350. Probably gonna get more like 400 on convection just to toss things up. I like convection for an execution like this because it really helps things brown. And with the eggplant, because we have these lovely delicate slices, I'm gonna be a little less willy-nilly with the placement than I was with the mushrooms. Um, the more surface area exposed, the more browned and evenly cooked we're gonna have. Bear is mentioning, if I hadn't mentioned it before, that I now have my pasta pot on the stove, bringing itself up to a rolling boil. Please don't ever get too far down the line of a pasta recipe until you've got that pot on the stove. I keep going on about these defining elements of this lasagna. Well, there's another one, and it's this wonderful um, honey herbed ricotta cheese that I'm going to whip up in my food processor here. I want to take a chance to get as much flavor in here. You know, ricotta is delicious, but it's kind of bland out of the container. You got to do something to it. Um, it needs salt, it needs garlic, it needs all of these things. So I'm just going to smash down a couple of cloves of garlic. I've got three here. I guess that's several, not a couple. Toss that in there. Now we're getting into secret territory here. I've opened up the doors on Daddy Guy's Kitchen because I've got some stuff to share that may or may not be all that conventional. And what I have here going into my ricotta is a healthy, healthy dollop of honey. Now you can use any honey you have on hand. I happen to have this wonderful raw local crystallized honey, which is why I'm using a spoon and why it looks a little bit uh, chunky, but that's my prerogative. Again, super secret ingredient here. Who would know to put this in a holiday lasagna? I have herbs de Provence in this lovely little um, 
grinder from our honeymoon uh, in the uh, medieval village of uh, where we were in Ez when we got this. So I'm just going to give it a couple little sprinkles of herbs de Provence. Oh, Provence, depending on who you might be or who you might be talking to. Healthy, healthy twist of pepper and a nice significant size fistful of fresh Italian flat leaf parsley. Now this is when it gets really fun. We're gonna turn this on, let it start doing its thing. So what I have here right now is looking pretty darn thick. But first and foremost, before I do anything, I'm gonna remember the most important ingredient of all in this, which is salt. There we go. So I've got this pretty thick, almost like a thick cheese or a pastry. It actually thickens up when you uh, mix it like this. So I am going to slowly stream in a little half and half. And this is what is gonna make this whipped ricotta truly luscious. Very slowly. I'm gonna do this by sight. I'm not sure how much to tell you to do. You're gonna to have to feel it out for yourself. You want this to flow if poured, but not be a runny mess. And this is now perfect. This is about the texture of, um, hmm. Louis, can you come here? Yes. What would you call this the texture of? It's difficult to describe, really. It's, it's just a wonderful ricotta paste. But the point is, it drips. It's not like super thick. It's kind of like French onion dip. This is like the consistency of French onion dip, but tastes nothing like it. We're gonna keep having some mommy gals found the sausage. I have gotta go deal with the situation here. <laughs> mommy gal is afoot in the kitchen. Say hi, mommy gal. Hi. Hi. This is wonderful. So I'm just taking a minute to chop up just a rough coarse chop and slice through these wonderful sausage links that we already browned up. Now when I did these sausages, so brown them up as it were, I very purposefully took them to the underside of done. They're probably okay if I ate these, I think they're probably good, um, but these are gonna cook more. I'm gonna now add them to the pot with our slow sweating uh, onions and they'll get a little more cooking time in under their belt and we'll also help cool things down here in our pot with our onions, which uh, might be running a little hot right now. We'll give this a little bit of a stir. This is the moment. This is that moment in any lasagna adventure where the things you need to pull it together are finished. They're all around you. I have created like lasagna action station here. I can pivot into any one of my ingredients. We're gonna layer, we're gonna build. It's gonna be fun. Now I want to begin immediately by absolving you of the concern that this man is using a jar of tomato sauce. There's a day that I never would have touched it. There's a day where I said it was anathema and I couldn't handle it. I am now a daddy guy. And let Luckily, that has converged in a time in life when there's actually really good jarred tomato sauces out there. So I absolve you as long as you're going high quality. Normally, we do not oil our pasta water. Don't do it. If you're doing it, don't. It means that the sauce can't stick to your noodle. But this is the one exception because in a lasagna, the last thing you want are those delicate ribbons of pasta sticking together. So a little oil in this case is good. So I've learned over years and years of experience that I can handle about six noodles in the pot at one time. And that's perfect because as each new batch comes out, that's just enough for one layer. So cooking time on these is four minutes. I'm gonna pop these in. I'm also gonna take a chance to salt my water, the other must do of, of pasta water. Let the salt balance out the sin of adding oil. And heat on high. In we go. I have sprayed this with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. That's gonna help things release and get nice clear cut slices when we're finished. But even on top of that, I'm gonna add another nonstick measure that's also great for flavor and for the texture of the first layer of noodles. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sauce. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. It's good stuff. Hi, mama. Hello. There's the mommy gal. Hello. Life moving right ahead in the Nestle Road residence. All right, first batch of noodles is ready to go. Let's do it. This is how we begin. Just gonna bring them over a couple at a time. One in. I like to do a little overlap in my noodle. So first six in our lasagna pan. I'm gonna take this chance to get our next six into the pasta pot. Right on in. 
Set our timer back for four more minutes. And now we get to have some fun. At this point, we can just think what would be the most delicious. And I think I want to go with some eggplant. So right on top of these noodles, I'm just going to go ahead as if they're still noodles and begin layering my beautiful eggplant. I'm just going to top that with our portobello mushrooms. Go ahead and do a layer of my whipped ricotta right on top of the vegetables and mushrooms. You want to think about what's going to kind of work well together. And I think that this is going to sort of melt into the mushrooms and create a really nice... So, and I'll just give this a little bit of a spread. Pasta never hurts to get in a layer of delicious cheesy flavor. I'm going to go ahead and shred a whole layer of Parmigiano Reggiano. Next layer coming out, always stopping for a quick second to let as much water drip off the pasta as possible. I've got my complete next layer of pasta. As always, let's not forget to get our final layer in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go ahead now with our layer of sausage because I want the sauce to actually drip down over the sausage and onion mixture. How much sure I ever so showed you this at home, we've got this wonderful slow and long cooked sausage onion mixture that I promised. Just looking wonderful here. Ooh, that is decadence. And I'm going to now, just for fun and because I can and because it's the holidays, a nice layer of Parmigiano Reggiano. And I'm going to go right back in with my sauce and just do a little scant pour across the top. We, again, not drowning things here. I want to do just a quick fresh black pepper. While we're standing here, I'll dot a few hand torn pieces of fresh flat Italian parsley. And for a holiday dish, I have to say, we're looking quite festive. Quite festive indeed. And that's what we're going for here. We don't take the hour to do this in our home. We could just grab it at the catering spot on the way to the office. We do this because it's worth the extra time to wow your guests. I actually think I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eggplant and mushrooms right on top. Wonderful. And then this has now created the perfect, perfect canvas for our last layer of whipped ricotta. And then we'll give it a little spread, being careful not to disrupt the harmony of the eggplant and mushroom too much. And now it's time to grab our last layer of pasta as we've become accustomed. It's okay if they fall apart a little bit. It happens to the best of us. I think it's just the reality of making pasta. The beauty is no one knows. We're going to finish things off pretty quickly here. Let's begin with a little layer of sauce. This is what really sets a Nesselrot lasagna apart. This is like what makes it something you come to our house for. And it's actually a tip I learned on The Sopranos, go figure. But just like Carmela Soprano, I take little baby leaves of basil and in any lasagna I do, no matter what's underneath, I just line up beautiful little leaves of basil. And I'm telling myself for this execution that they're little Christmas trees. We've got our Christmas trees lined up and I'm just going to turn this out to you so that you can get the benefit of that. And now we're going to let it snow. And it's snowing on top of our Christmas trees. It's so holiday themed and festive and just appropriate. And then finally, one last. All right, and then one last technical thing. I'm just going to take my finger and clean off the edge of our pan here. All right, we're all set. Oven is rolling at 350. Going to put this in. We're going to aim for 30 minutes. I'm going to check back in though. We'll see maybe 20 minutes. We'll check in and see how things are doing. Because this lasagna is fully ready to come out of the oven. And Lovey's not in the kitchen, so I actually might stand a chance at keeping it whole. Let's let this beautiful, luscious lasagna rest for a few minutes and then we'll see what's inside. Well, the lasagna came out of the paint, out of the oven and it's ready to go. This is our holiday delight that oh. I 
<laughs> you wouldn't mind if this walked into a holiday potluck, would you? No. What if you wanted Certainly to? Certainly not. And I think that this is just about ready. The cheese has stopped bubbling. Things have settled in nicely. We're gonna do a nice big corner slice here. The only here. reason that happened is because I wasn't in here. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. here we go. Oh, that is just perfect. Uh. That's for a family of four, but <laughs> I'm thrilled to have a bite. There we go. I'm That's a daddy guy slice. That's how hit they this it. for one moment with just a little but bit. That, in that case, you know. And because this is a you may super. Have to eat and run. <laughs> <laughs> and because this is such a super savory lasagna, some skew a little sweeter, some skew a little, I don't know what. This one's hyper savory. You've got this intense sausage onion flavor. It's almost like a barbecue lasagna. It's super fun, kind of smoky. I'm going to hit it with just a. Pepper mill is empty. The food stylist called in sick. Where's my backup pepper? Here we go, oh ready to go. Goodness. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of fresh pepper and we're good to go. Happy Hi. holidays Hi. from the Nestle Roads. I hope you take this Happy far and holidays. wide in your holiday season travels. Share Happy it with holidays. friends, family, let it warm your home as it has warmed ours. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. We love you all. Bon appetit. <laughs> Yay! Hold on.